In this tutorial, we learn how to plot the derivative function as well as the second derivative function with our TI Inspire. Now we can see here that I have a curve plotted on my calculator, and if you want to plot the same curve, you should see its equation right now. At times, it'll be useful to be able to plot the derivative function, so here's how we do that. I go ahead and click on Menu, followed by the third option, Graph Entry slash Edit, and I select the first option, Function. Now at the top of the page, it's asking me for the second function's equation. And to begin with, I'll plot this function's derivative function. Rather than typing anything, I'm going to go ahead and click on the button just on the right-hand side of 9. That's this button here. So I click on it. And now I'm faced with quite a few options. But the one I'm interested in is this one right here. And you can probably see that's the derivative. So I click on that. It's now asking me to type something on the denominator. And all we have to specify here is the variable with which we're differentiating. Now, we're differentiating with respect to x, so we type x. I then move along to the next box, right here, and it's asking me which function to differentiate. And in this case, there's no doubt, I want to differentiate the blue function that's already been plotted. And for the calculator, that would be f1 of x. Now, here's how we find it. We go ahead and click on the var button. And now I can see that it's giving me the option F1. And in fact, that's the only option it's giving me right now. And it refers to F1 of X. So I click on it. And once more, I have to tell the calculator that the variable we're interested in is X. So I type X. And I exit these parentheses. And I click on Enter. And we now have this red curve. And this red curve is the derivative function of F of X. And it's quite useful. Indeed, we can see here, for instance, that on the blue curve, we have a maximum point here. And directly beneath that, we can see that the derivative function crosses the x-axis. In other words, the derivative function equals to 0. In a similar way, we have a minimum point here on the blue curve. And we have the corresponding 0 on the derivative function. Going further than that, we can see that as we go from left to right, the blue curve increases until it reaches the maximum which is why the red curve is positive for all these values of x. The blue curve then decreases between its maximum and its minimum, which is why the red curve is beneath the x-axis here. In other words, it's negative. And finally, once the blue curve passes its minimum and increases, the red curve is positive again. Now, that's how we plot the derivative function. But what about the second derivative function? Let me quickly erase the label we have here. There we go. Now, for the second derivative function, I go back to menu, and again I go to graph entry slash edit, and I select function again. Now once more the calculator is asking me for the function's equation, and for that I go back to the same button that we went to previously, right next to the 9, so I click on it. And in this case I select this option right here, that's the second derivative, so I click on that. Once more it's asking me which variable we wish to differentiate with respect to, and that would again be x, so I type x here, and I move along. And in the next box, I specify that I want the second derivative function of the first function we typed. That was f1 of x. So again, I go ahead and click on var. And in this case, I can see two options, f1 or f2. We want the second derivative of f1 of x, so I click on f1. Once again, it's asking me which variable to consider, and that's still x, so I type x. I exit these parentheses, and I click on Enter. And we now have the second derivative function. That's the black line that we have here. And let me just erase this label here. Done. Now, the function we started off with, this blue function, was a cubic polynomial. Consequently, its derivative, the red curve, is a quadratic. And finally, the second derivative is a line. That's the black line we have here. Now, this second derivative function will allow us to study the curvature of the blue curve that we have here. In particular, it will allow us to find any points of inflection along the blue curve's length. Now, looking at this blue curve, we can see that there's definitely a change of curvature around here. Remember, a change of curvature occurs when the second derivative equals to zero and corresponds to a change in sign of the second derivative. Now, looking at the black line here, we can see that it crosses the x-axis right here. In other words, the second derivative equals to zero right at this point here. We can also see that to the left of that point, the black line is beneath the x-axis, meaning it's negative, and to the right of this point, it's above the x-axis, so it's positive. 
So at this value of x, this blue curve definitely goes through a change of curvature, and we're dealing with a point of inflection. Now we could go further. Let's say we were asked to actually find the coordinates of this point of inflection. Well, here's how we could actually do that. The first thing I need to do is find the x-intercept of this black line. In other words, I need to find it zero. For that, I go ahead and click on Menu. I then select the sixth option, Analyze Graph, and I select the first option, Zero. So I click on that. It's now asking me which graph to consider. Remember, I want to find where the second derivative equals to zero. So I click on this black line. It now asks me for the lower bound. In other words, we just have to place ourselves to the left-hand side of the zero, so somewhere here will be fine. And I click. And it now asks for the upper bound. For that, we move to the right-hand side of the zero and click. And we now see that the black line crosses the x-axis when x equals to 0 0.5. So the blue curve's point of inflection has an x-coordinate of 0 0.5. But what's its y-coordinate? Well, to find that, we can quickly go to the calculator section of our scratch pad. And before clicking on that, just make a note of the fact that the x value is 0 0.5. And I click on the calculator. And now I want to calculate f1 of x when x equals to 0 0.5. And here's how we can do that. I click on var again, and I can see my three functions, f1, f2, and f3. So if I want to calculate f1 of x when x equals to 0 0.5, I click f1, and I specify 0 0.5. I now click on Enter, and I have it. It's 8.5. So going back to our curve, we can state that the point of inflection of this blue curve has coordinates 0 0.5, 8.5. And there we have it. That's how we can plot both the derivative function as well as the second derivative function using our TI Inspire. That's also how we can find points of inflection along a curve's length. And that's it for this tutorial.